Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan. And it's my dad, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this uh, glorious, I guess we're officially kind of in summer since Memorial Day's, I guess, behind us, but it doesn't feel like it down at the Jersey Shore. Well, it's been terrible down there. Well, actually, Ryan, we had a typical Memorial Day. It was raining, wind was blowing, overcast. Um, and the boardwalk was packed. So, you know, I was able to get my fried Oreos, you know, it's a, it's a trans cap, it's trans fat capital of the universe is the uh, ocean city boardwalk and can't go to the store, but you can, you can, you know, go up to the, go right up to the store and then they'll hand you your Oreos. So that's, that's still good. I mean, nothing is like the cornerstone of a, a healthy diet, like a Oreo that's, uh, essentially fried. That sounds just the health benefits have to be just numerous, Bob. I can't even begin to start. Only Trump by the uh, chocolate-covered bacon, right? They sell next door. <laughs> well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about your investment portfolio in the COVID-19 economy. The economy is in a recession, but stocks are going up. What does this mean for your investment portfolio? We're going to talk about the four financial scam artists you need to avoid at all costs. Bob and I are going to discuss some of the quote-unquote experts out there that can cause you to make some really bad financial decisions. And we're gonna talk this week about this week's financial propaganda. There's so much out there with the media, the advice they're giving, good advice, bad advice. We're gonna break it down for you, talk about things you should focus on, not focus on. And on our spotlight segment today, we have certified financial planner, our colleague, Courtney C. Money Dominguez on the show, and she's gonna break someone's real retirement plan down for you. So let's hop to it, we got a great show. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news called the best advice, worst advice, the financial media has recently been broadcasting to help you make some better decisions about your financial life. So Bob, it's another week going just how we predicted. We said the news is gonna continue to get worse, but the market's gonna continue to go higher. Um, and, and everyone in the media is still in complete disbelief. They can't understand why the market's going up, but the economy is still bad. Meanwhile, you and I have just been professing the fact that this is exactly what's going to happen. Man, we're good. I'm just saying. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if we're good, Rye. Just know that we're investors. And, and when you're an investor, you invest your money. You don't trade your money. You don't gamble with your money. You don't speculate with your money. You invest your money. And when prices are good, and remember, we always say this, you don't get good prices with good news. So when the news is bad, it's always the best time to invest your capital. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like clarity is not your friend, right? Once we know things are better and the world's clear, well, stock prices have already gone up. You've missed the boat. So the fact that there isn't clarity right now is actually a huge opportunity, which sounds counterintuitive, but that's how investing always works, by the way. This isn't new. Well, I'll tell you what, this is what uh, really I enjoyed this week. Actually, the, I had the financial propaganda channels on every day in my office, and they brought all the perma bears back on, right? And all of a sudden, they were singing the same tune. They were so certain that the market was going to go down, that we're going to have a retest, we're going to have a second wave of infection, that the economy was going to be depression-like, and that it was going to be like the 29-30 crash. Um, and suddenly, they say, well, I wasn't really that negative. Um, you know, I, I wasn't really that bearish, um, you know, but I would be careful here. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's almost as if it's, it's kind of a entertainment as opposed to trying to get investment advice from financial propaganda channels. No, it's right. And, and we've talked about this. We're stressing it every week. Your goals aren't going to go away. You know, this economy at some point is going to get better. The pandemic is going to subside. You know, I'm going to put my neck out there and say it's going to happen. But you're still going to have your retirement goals. Don't wait for clarity to make those decisions because you can see here the market is forward looking. It's looking into the future. And what it's telling us is the future eventually is going to be bright. Um, so waiting for this next calamity to happen that every financial media station is predicting. Remember, they didn't predict the pandemic to begin with. It, it's more of the same here, Bob. And it's so important right now to tune that stuff out and start focusing on your goals. 
No, it truly is, Ryan. It's, uh, they're going to give you plenty of reasons why you shouldn't invest, as if they're ever going to tell you when you should. And that's the problem with financial propaganda. It prevents you from investing properly. Um, it also depresses you emotionally. So I think you should turn them off, stop reading it, get focused on your plan, spend more time with your children and grandchildren. Hey, sage advice, Bob, sage advice. Now, I found an article this week that kind of fits into what we've been talking about today. It's just how important it is to have an income plan for retirement. Because as you and I know, income is way more consistent than what the market's going to do week to week. I wish I could predict it, Bob, but I can't. And I found an article that talked about when you look at dividends on a diversified stock portfolio, which we like dividends because it's cash flow coming into you, you can live on, well, they've grown at an annual rate of 5% a year. And that's pretty awesome, Bob, if you consider that cost of living is going up by 3% a year, that means that the income on your portfolio historically has grown faster than what you're going to need to live on in the future. Like that's an awesome thing. That really is awesome, Ryan. I think that's a great positive article. Um, but it also came with negative articles. I read negative articles this week about how all dividends are going to be cut. There's, uh, you know, you go through the last recession, you go to the last great recession, you go to the depression, companies are cutting dividends left and right. But you know what? They never tell you that this is not like the last recession. This is a government-induced shutdown, right? Jobs weren't lost. They were furloughed. These jobs are there when people come back to work. You know, there are more companies increasing their dividend this month than cutting their dividends. Last week, five major blue chip stocks raised their dividend, right? And last time I checked, Bob, they're not raising the interest you're making on your money market fund. That's going down. <laughs> so it doesn't pay to wait sitting in an investment that's earning nothing. Meanwhile, if you build a portfolio of income for retirement, it's actually going up. Like, what am I missing here, Bob? Well, I'll tell you what you're missing, Rye, is that... Um, a lot of you out there right now don't know that the biggest problem isn't, you know, the pandemic. It isn't the economy. It isn't interest rates. It's that hidden insidious tax of inflation. And it's the one risk we all have to our portfolio and our retirement and our lifestyle. It's something you have to think about every day and make sure you're investing accordingly. And that's where your dividends come into play. Yeah, because just to give you the simple math on that, we talk about this, just because your money's sitting in cash and it's not fluctuating doesn't mean you don't have risk. You know, by our measure, every 20 years, every million dollars you have today is only worth a half a million dollars. Your purchasing power of the next 20 years is going to be cut in half. And I've got news for you. You're going to be retired for 20 years plus. So you really have to solve this problem. You can't just wait on the sidelines and just hope things get better. It's not going to work. Wait a minute. You said I'm going to retire for 20 years or better. Can I start now? <laughs> no, no, but I think you misheard me. I said you can retire in 20 years. I think you, uh, oh, you misunderstood. Years. Okay. All right. I got it. I got it. But I'll tell you what, right? I have my uh, inflation hedge built because you need, some, you need your money to grow net of inflation. And that was your whole point about dividends. They've been growing at 5%. Inflation's average three. So that's 2% compounded in your favor over the last 100 years. That's amazing. It's insane. And so if you're thinking to yourself right now, yes, I'm sitting in cash, way too much money in cash. I'm waiting for that green light to get invested. Not going to happen. What you need today is that income plan. We can help you with that. If you're one of the next six callers and you have over $500,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you, our now famous total financial master plan. It's the only real financial review available out there. If you call right now or text right now, you can get it for free. All you need to do is we set up a secure email you email us your holdings. We're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal. You can get your whole financial net worth at a bird's eye view so we can start making good decisions about your finances. What's your income plan going to be? How are you drawing from your portfolio in retirement? We're going to show you exactly how to do it. Optimize the income on your portfolio. Build an income plan for life. We're going to look at diversification. Did you get hammered when the market came down? Did you realize you had so much risk in your portfolio? Maybe you didn't. We're going to show you how to protect your portfolio so the next time the market sells off, you're protected, bulletproof your portfolio for retirement, and we're going to look at fees and taxes. There's a lot of hidden costs in these investment portfolios, those mutual funds, annuities, insurance products. Bob and I are going to show you where all your hidden fees are, show you how to reduce those fees on your portfolio, and optimize your portfolio for taxes. Like This is the time to do tax swaps on your portfolio, Roth conversions, generate tax-free income. We're going to show you how to optimize your portfolio for taxes. Money saved in taxes, just as green as any money can make invested. 
Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlast you utilizing strategies now our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of our next six callers and you've saved over 500000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there won't be a plan if you don't text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-PLAN-NYC. This is Bob Payne, and I'm hanging out with my son today, Ride Payne, because we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. You know, Bob, it's kind of a crazy time because the economy is clearly in a recession, but stocks just keep going up. And I would say the good news is this isn't the first time that we've actually seen this, but the bad news is we see many of you repeating the same mistakes of the past. So although we could talk about what lessons you can learn from the past recessions and stock market downturns to help you make better decisions this time around. And this reminds me a lot of 2008, 2009, Bob. Well, it does, Rod, but it also reminds you about every correction I've been in, you know, since I started the industry back in 1975. They're steep, they're deep, they're scary, and they cause people to panic. Yeah, and I think what happened, we saw this back in 08, 09, is the market started to go up again but the economy was still bad for like a couple of years. And the media just kept talking about double dip recession. And you might've sit in cash at that time, waiting and waiting for this next big dip down in the economy and the market. And as you and I know, Bob, it never happened. The market went up for another 10 and a half years, basically. Yeah, see, that's what happens, right? It's like, the, you know, you, you think you're going to get out and you're going to wait for better prices to get back in. But the better price is what you're selling at at the time because you don't get good prices with good news. You get great prices with bad news. Yes. And we talked about this last week as well. The economy and the stock market are two different things. And, you know, the mistake you may have made back in, during the Great Recession is the news was bad. So you kept your money in cash. And that became a bad idea because the market kept going higher. We see the same thing happening now. The news is going to continue to be bad but the market's looking out into the future. And guess what, Bob? The future looks pretty bright. Looks really bright, Rai, based on how the market's performed uh, since March 23rd. And what we're seeing is the same thing that happened in 2008, 2009. Yeah, you think, oh yeah, I'm gonna feel better sitting in cash because I'm gonna get a statement where nothing goes down. It's gonna stay the same value. Um, but the problem is, Rai, if you sit in cash, you don't ever get back in. No. And at these interest rates, the lowest we've ever seen in history, it does not pay to be in cash. I mean, it's way lower than it was last time we had a recession. I mean, you're barely getting a percent on your money now. And as you and I know, Bob, you're losing money long-term sitting in cash, waiting. Inflation cost of living is going up much higher than that money sitting there, not moving at all. The other big mistake you might've made is on the other extreme. We had this big pandemic hit and my crystal ball is broken. I didn't know it was going to happen. And the market sold off aggressively this year. And you might have had way too much risk in your portfolio. Maybe you're getting close to retirement or you're retired now. And that just caught you completely off guard, which is a good wake up call, Bob, that maybe you're taking way more risk than you need. That's not a fun thing to go through because that could screw up your retirement. Hey, Ryan, I've seen this happen over and over again. You know, you go through what I call the cycle of pain. Uh, because that markets pain, are whiny. No, no, it's PAIN. It's Bob okay. Payne observation of the cycle of pain. So that's how's that for a mouthful? It's a lot. So cycle of pain. Tell me about that, Bob. I want to know. So what happens is that, you know, it's not an invest and forget strategy. Um, you know, we just told you not to panic when the market's down, but you have to rebalance as the market goes up. When prices go higher, the values don't become better, right? Becomes less valuable, becomes more risky. And what I've seen happen in every cycle, and it happens unfortunately to those who are about to or in retirement, is they think market can't go down. What if it does? You know, it's like, how could something that feels so good be so bad? 
exactly right, Bob. At the beginning of the year, the economy was rocking, right? I mean, the market was going up. Everyone was feeling good. Like, why in the world would you want to sell out of stocks where things are going well? But the point is, you always have to be prepared for a downturn because when they happen, you can't predict it. Nobody predicted this. No, you can't predict anything, right? Because, you know, the future is unknowable, right? You can't predict what's unpredictable. You can't know what's unknowable. But we see it in every single bull cycle. You get too bullish. You get too risk averse. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is you need a goal-based strategy. You just can't wing it. Yeah. So either you're taking too little risk, like you just said, where if you're sitting in cash at less than 1%, you're not going to get to your goals. And on the flip side, maybe you're taking way too much risk where you get a big sell-off or downturn in the market, and then it completely derails your retirement. That's why it's so critical that you got to build what we call an all-weather portfolio, but it also has to make sense with your goals. Because if you're drawing from your portfolio right now, you just can't take the risk. What happens is when you're about to retire or you just retired and you get hit with a 30, 40% decline, you just never recover emotionally. And it not only affects your net worth, but it affects how you live your life. You know, you'll, you're worried the rest of your retirement as opposed to enjoying your retirement and having a, an enjoyment, you know, where you have an income you can't outlive. So you've got to make your priorities different. And it's that whole transition you talk about all the time from accumulation to distribution. You've got to focus on it. Yeah. And that's the beauty of having an income plan because an income plan, the income comes in regardless if we're in a recession, if the market's up or down, the income plan has that cash coming into your account month after month. And that's the key when you're building your portfolio for retirement, as opposed to maybe you're earlier in your career and just hoping for growth. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And of course that's P A Y N E. Bob and I want to make sure that you're making the best decisions about your portfolio right now amidst all the volatility. And that's why we put together our coronavirus survival kit. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. We give you a couple different tips you can utilize right now to optimize your portfolio, make good financial decisions. So you set yourself up better in the future. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888, our survival guide. Check it out. You can download it for free. So Bob, as we both know, there's a lot of charlatans in the financial world. They always preach the same message. And unfortunately, following their advice can end up costing your financial health. So although we can discuss some of these quote unquote experts that can cause you to make bad financial decisions, and, you know, what's one that we hear all the time that you just need to avoid? That's a PERMA bear, Rye. Right? It's, uh, it's, it's exactly as the name implies. PERMA is permanently, and bear means negative. You're permanently negative. They always see the glass is half empty, and they're always telling you why you shouldn't invest, why things are going to get worse, why things are bad. You just don't know it. And they're smarter than you, and they know, and they're the most negative people you'll ever come across. Yeah. Well, as we like to say, we've never met a rich pessimist. <laughs> and I think that's very true about the, the stock market specifically, is especially when things are bad, the financial media loves to roll out all these naysayers and talk about how negative and how bad things are. The problem is they're always negative. So they're not right that often because not things aren't always bad. Well, the thing is, I th for whatever reason, uh, these experts who are perma bears, uh, think being negative makes them sound more intelligent than someone who's positive. Yes. Um, and I don't know why that is the perception, but they believe it. And you have people like these economists that are up there, like David Rosenberg, who's been negative since 2007. You know, right, even a broken clock is right twice a day. This guy's been right once, and he never fixed <laughs> it. So, you know, when he became negative, the Dow was at 5,000. And even with this correction, we're at 25,000. That's not a small mistake. That's a huge mistake. No, it's a great point because they never preface when they bring out these negative naysayers and they said, oh, well, they called that this recession was going to happen. They failed to mention that they've been calling it every year now for a decade. <laughs> so it's like now they finally got it right. Well, it's not really useful if they've been wrong uh, nine out of 10 years. So you got to well, be really careful. Yeah, the problem I see, right, is they try and, and say it's evidence-based. So that they're basing it on data. Well, you know, data is backwards-looking. The markets are forward-looking. 
So the one thing you don't want to do is take advice from a perma bear, especially if they're an economist. Yes, economists uh, make fortune tellers look good. Uh, which brings us to the other extreme, you get the perma bull, right? Like everything's going to be great forever. It's going to keep going up. And we talked about this in the last segment, but look, sometimes the market does go down and it's unexpected. And we had that at the beginning of the year. No one could have predicted that we we're going to have this pandemic and the economy and the market was going to fall off a cliff. So, you know, you have to have protection in your portfolio too. You can't just believe things are going to be rosy because you can't predict when they're not going to be rosy. So, Ryan, I'm going to make it easy for you. Here's how you know if they're a perma bull or a perma bear. First of all, if the market's been going down, then they have the perma bears on CNBC every day. And then when the market turns around and it's going up every day, then the perma bull shows up. So it's not a coincidence. It's, it's something that they plan to do because all they care about is selling advertising. Yeah, which brings us to our next scam artist in the financial world, and that's the product pusher. And with the market down, and people feeling, maybe you're feeling right now a little bit insecure about your finances, this is when those very dangerous annuity salesmen come out and tell you that they're going to protect your income. But in reality, a lot of times it's a bad deal. Well, here's the, I'm going to sum up the financial services for you right now. You have the manufacturing plant, you have the insurance company, the bank, or the brokerage firm. And then they have a distribution network. They're called the salesmen. So if you're in the insurance business, you sell insurance products, mostly annuities. If you work for a bank, you sell CDs. If you work for a brokerage firm, you sell investment products that benefit who, right? The client or the product creator? The so broker. The, the broker, <laughs> exactly. So the only way you're ever going to get a fair shake is to have a fiduciary or a certified financial planner who has to put your interest first. And I think that's the first question you have to ask, whether you have a financial advisor now or you're looking to work with one, just because you're calling yourself a financial planner doesn't mean you're just not just an insurance person. So you want to ask them point blank, how do you get compensated? Because they get compensated for selling you something. That sounds like a conflict of interest to me, Bob. I don't know how you feel about that. It's a total conflict of interest, right? Because it comes down to YT salesman, right? So what's the yield to the salesperson as opposed to what's the return you're going to get? It's unfortunate, but that's how the system works and you just have to know to avoid it. Yeah, and I think the other litmus test besides knowing how your financial professional gets paid is if you're going to sit down with a professional and you might think, man, the markets have been crazy. I think I need advice now, which I imagine you probably should be thinking about right now because it's not that easy to invest your money is if you sit down with that person and the first thing they're doing is recommending a product, not going over your financial goals, that's like the biggest red flag in the world. Bob. Well, you know, it's a bigger red flag is that the, uh, the government has been wanting a fiduciary rule. They've been wanting the financial services industry to work in your best interest. And the biggest roadblock that the government has are the banks, the insurance companies, and the brokerage firms that don't want a best interest rule. They don't want to work in your best interest. They want to work in their best interest. They've had this gravy train going on for a hundred years. So you're saying those lobbyists down on Capitol Hill are actually looking in the best interest of those insurance companies and brokerage houses, not us, the consumer? I'm shocked, Bob. Well, here's the asset test, right? Take a look at your statement right now. And if the products that are in your portfolio have the same name as the place where you custody those assets, chances are you've been sold. Don't walk, run away. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And of course that's P-A-Y-N-E. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, our firm, Payne Capital Management, simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can actually subscribe to the show. Get it in a podcast form. You can have it delivered right to your email every week. That's bebullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but honestly, you should check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com and you can learn more about Payne Capital. And you can catch myself, other financial advisors at Payne Capital Management on all the major networks every single week from Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, giving you our latest thoughts on the economy, the market. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob directly, pertaining to financial planning, you can email us questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I actually answer all your questions directly. And it's a really good question. We actually answer it right on the show. And to help us with questions today, because we're getting a lot of question, questions lately, it's been crazy out there. We have our man in the studio, Dan Irving, helping us with questions. How's it going, Dan? 
Hello, Ryan and Bob. Doing well. I'm waiting for the barber shops to open up so I can get my hair cut. I'm just letting it grow, man. I'm going to have a ponytail by the time this is over. You're going to look like a hippie. <laughs> Bringing it back. Yeah. All I have to do, is, switch, have to do is swap my uh, toupee, Dan, so it's pretty easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we got some great questions on the mailbag today. Our first question is from Jason in Greenwich, Connecticut. And Jason says, Bob, I want to start building passive income primarily using dividend stocks. How would I go about doing this inside an IRA or Roth? Well, you know, that's a great idea. And, you know, Ryan and I spoke almost all day today about, you know, dividends, how important they are to the total return of your portfolio. But, you know, Ryan, I think the big mistake I see you make is you go out and you pick the one blue chip stock that you think can't cut their dividend. You go out and buy Ford or Boeing or General Motors. And um, unfortunately, they just cut their dividend. So how do you buy dividend stocks and not get stuck with a dog that cuts their dividend? Well, that's our philosophy, right, is diversification. And it's so key is owning whole portfolios of stocks so that some may cut, but you're going to have others that actually increase their dividend. We talked about that earlier in the show today. More companies this year have increased their dividends in the S&P 500, not decreased it, even with all the bad news, which is actually incredible. Yeah, and you could look at it and see historically that something like Royal Dutch Petroleum, who has paid a dividend uh, since World War II, you know, suspended their dividend for the first time. That's a long history of, of paying dividends. You could invest in uh, index funds, which is what we recommend. Yeah, I think it's another important point to mention too, because the pitch right now from the financial world, you know, there's a lot of charlatans. We talked about that earlier in the show today. Are these annuity salesmen are going to talk about getting an income stream for life? So conceptually, what that means is you get this annuity and it pays you an amount every single year. The big flaw in that philosophy is it's the same amount every year. And as we talked about, your cost of living is going to go up over time. So you're going to need more income in the future, not less. And annuity does not solve for that problem. That's why it's so important to account for not just the income you need today, but future income as well. Well, Rob, I just found from self-quarantine that I don't spend any money anymore and I'm never going to spend any money. So why do I need my income to go up? I'm going to be sitting here not spending any money for the rest of my life. As soon as they open that economy, Bob, I'm going to predict you're going to be like the greatest consumer of all time. No one's going to spend more money than Bob Payne. Thank you, Jason, for writing in. Our next question is from Ted in Sparta, New Jersey. Ted says, Ryan, is it time to move into cash to reposition for a potential drop in the market? It seems crazy that it is back this high again this quick. Please let me know. Oh, my God. I get this question like five times a day. And of course, the media doesn't help because they're talking about this next down leg in the economy. Nobody knows. But I will say, and we talked about this earlier on the show today, because the government is literally throwing the kitchen sink at the problem, $9 trillion, it's going to be very hard for this economy to fall apart. So I think it's very unlikely that's actually going to happen. And secondly, don't time the market. Never time the market. It's a very dangerous game to play. You know, Ryan, market timers are, um, you know, really good at telling you what happened in the past and, you know, telling you, well, you know, if you missed this decline and then you got in at this point, uh, you would make a lot more money. But, you know, what I found is that if, if you're just averaging into the market and averaging out once you're retired, you actually outperform all these people, even if they're able to time the exact bottom, exact top of the market. And the other thing, too, is when we talk about the market, we're talking about large cap U.S. stocks. And yes, they're actually almost up for the year, or close to up for the year right now. Not every market's up right now or even close to up. If you look at value stocks, you look at financial stocks, you look at energy, a lot of this stuff's still down 25% this year. So if you're smart and you're allocating money like we are for our clients right now, there's a lot of things you're buying right now that are still way down. Uh, not just, you don't just buy the things that are up right now. That doesn't make a lot of sense. No, it really doesn't. And then this all or none, you know, take no hostages uh, attitude about in and out of the market, I think is something that's propagated by the financial propaganda channels. You know, you just got to think like an investor. You know, when's the last time Warren Buffett went to cash, right? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah, he'll sell something, but he'll buy something else. And the thing is, he stays fully invested and has outperformed everybody over a long period of time. You know, you just got to think like an investor. So, Ryan, I've got a question for you from my own mailbag. In terms of being financially organized, what would you give Jason and Ted on a, on a scale of one to 10? 
they definitely need guidance, Bob. Jason, I like the fact he's thinking about an income plan. So I'm going to give him a little higher. I'm going to give him a five. Now he just needs that income game plan to get him over the, the stretch here. Uh, for Ted, man, market timing is treacherous. Got to give him a two or three. He needs some severe financial plan to get on track. Well, you know, Rye, sometimes you're more kind than others with others. But uh, so let me ask all of you right now, on a scale of one to 10, in terms of being financially organized, what would Ryan give you? Are you a five? Are you a three? Do you want to be a 10? Are you a 10? If you're not, why wouldn't you want to be? It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I want to make sure you're making the best decisions right now amongst all the volatility. And that's why we put together our coronavirus survival guide. We give you some tips, give you some suggestions of things you can do right now proactively to make good decisions about your finances amidst the volatility. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to the number 555-888. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. You can download for free our coronavirus survival guide. We give you a couple different tips, tricks you can utilize right now to optimize your finances during this chaotic time. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, 555-888. That's the word bullish, 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, certified financial planner at Payne Capital Management, Courtney C. Money Dominguez. Man, that was a lot to say, but great <laughs> to have you, Court. Great to be here as always. Be here virtually, I guess, but. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's been a long time since I've actually seen you in person. Um, you know, either we're talking here, you're on Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, um, but it's great to have you today. So this is our spotlight segment every week. We take a real retirement plan, we break it down, and we point out what we call the pain points, P-A-Y-N-E, or the flaws. And in this case, you helped a couple get on their path to financial freedom. Why don't you give us the rundown? Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of background as to this couple that I was working with, is they are in their early 60s and not trying to retire today or tomorrow, but definitely in the next couple of years. And the good news for them is they have done a really good job of saving and they have a nice nest egg, but they want to retire in their early 60s. And so we really need to work, about, work on income planning for them. Um, kind of two big reasons. Number one is their main source of income in retirement is going to be social security. And if they're retiring before retirement age of social security, they need to decide, do they not want to take any income and start drawing on their portfolio? Or would they rather take it early, take a lesser income, unless you have to draw from your portfolio? But again, you're kind of locked into that lower amount as you go forward. That's a really good point because taking Social Security is different for everybody. And to your point, you have to factor it into, in this case, this couple's game plan. Like the way that Bob should take Social Security versus another couple or somebody else is always going to be completely different. Exactly. And so we really need to look at what their expenses are. But another thing about, again, being in a good position where they can retire early is they're looking to retire not only before Social Security age, but before Medicare age, in which case they're going to be needing to pay for medical costs out of pocket, which is an extra cost and, again, an extra cash flow standpoint that we're going to need to plan for for them because they're going to have some extra expenses and a lot less income as soon as they retire. So, Courtney, since um, you know, they're, they're going to be dependent, it looks like, on their portfolio, the way I view the portfolio wasn't really positioned to generate the return they needed. And that's, that's really where we got into and how this conversation went is we really, the biggest thing we need to plan for for them is income. I need to make sure that they have enough interest and dividends that they can collect on and not have to worry about a year like now where the stock markets can have a big drop. I don't want them to be forced to sell out of their investments at a low point. I want them to have enough income coming in that they don't need to worry about it. Yes. And right now, the way they're invested is they're very heavily invested in the stock market. They're a lot more aggressive than I would recommend them to. And they're getting a lot less income than they could just by doing some simple repositioning, whether it's in the stock markets or getting some in bonds, they're really easily able to boost their cash flow. Yeah, it's really this transition. We talk about it all the time. We do this for all our clients going from what we call the wealth accumulation stage where it's like, hey, you're in your 30s and 40s. No problem. Market goes down. You're still adding to your portfolio and moving to what we call the wealth distribution stage, where now you're very reliant on your portfolio and you get a big sell-off 
Like this pandemic that just happened, that can be detrimental to your financial health. You've got to turn your portfolio into more like a pension-like income. Yeah, and I noticed on this portfolio, Courtney, they're really heavily weighted in large company uh, growth stocks, which pay very little in terms of dividends. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that this pandemic's reminded me is my favorite restaurant's closed. I can't wait till it opens. But when I go there, I actually have to pay for my lunch. You know, I, I tell them sometimes, well, I've got great relative performance in my portfolio. How about if I pay with that? And, you know, you find out that you really do need the income. You need the cash flow. Um, you know, once you retire, when that paycheck stops coming in. So I think that, uh, you know, one of the big things I see is a lack of income, uh, the way they're heavily invested. And I guess the other question I have is why do they have so much in cash? Yeah, and this couple is using cash as their safety asset, which I think cash will give you the safety you need. So from a safety aspect, we are in fact accomplishing that goal. But the problem with cash is again, going back to cash flow, which is our big point with this couple, it's not gonna get you any interest. Especially now all those high yield savings accounts aren't even paying any yields anymore. (laughs) So you're better off getting some income on something like bonds, like dividends on your stocks. There's a lot more effective ways that you can do that right now. Isn't that an oxymoron now that uh, I'm getting (laughs) one and a half percent as a high yield savings? I mean, come on, give me a break. (laughs) Yeah. And that's one of the things. One thing we all fail to recognize is that we've been in the low low inflation environment, uh, but it's still, you know, compounding at about 2%, you know, versus historical three. Um, that's the biggest risk to everybody's plan. It's not, you know, having the wrong stocks or the wrong bonds or not having, you know, or having your money in cash. It's like, what does your return net after inflation and cash is a negative return. So yeah. Hey, we're guaranteed to lose money. How's that a good idea? I don't, I just can't see how that's a great idea. You know, Courtney, see money Dominguez. The one thing we do find all the time, this is very indicative of most of us are doing right now. It's right. Either we have way too much risk in the stock market, which they clearly do. And you may have way too much money sitting in cash earning nothing, right? You don't have the right balance. You're either too weighted one way or the other. And I see that being the biggest issue for most of you that are trying to retire now or actually even retired right now. I couldn't agree with that more. And I think it's really easy just to make some simple changes here and we can reduce your risk. You're not as dependent on the stock markets right now being a great reminder of why that's important. Get you some income so that way they can retire. Because again, this couple has done a really good job of saving. They just need to be set up for retirement. I don't think we mentioned during this, this segment, but uh, how much more income were you able to get for them? We were able to boost their income from about 40000 a year to about 100000 a year. Talk about a big yeah. difference and a majority of the income gap that they were looking at can easily be covered by their interest and dividends. Well, another great show. Courtney, see Money Dominguez. It was an honor. Pleasure to have you on the show. Can't wait to see you in person, not just through a, a video conference. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. Big Bob, hopefully the sun's coming out the shore. I know you're working on your tan. I'm going out there, Rye. You know, I got my white latex paint all over my skin. I got that Irish skin that doesn't tan. But I'm going to go out there and search for the sun this weekend. Well, have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Hey, this is Ryan Payne, co-host of No Pain, No Gain, financial radio and podcast. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a game plan in these volatile times for my financial planning, well, you can get a second opinion. You can get a game plan with us. Simply go to www.paincm.com slash game plan. That's paincm.com slash game plan. We can help you out. Make sure you get you on the right track here in these volatile times. Make sure you're making right decisions for your retirement plan. You can check it out. Simply go to paincm.com slash game plan. That's paincm.com slash game plan. Check it out.